Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Kang, and I'm going to speak to you about speech recognition and speech interfaces. So just a quick definition. Speech recognition is the process of capturing spoken words and converting them into a digitally set, stored set of words. Uh, not to be confused with voice recognition, which is to uh, detect a specific user or speaker. So speech recognition is used in applications such as speech to text and to invoke commands in digital assistants such as Amazon's Alexa, uh, Microsoft's Cortana, or Apple's Siri. And speech synthesis is the artificial production of human speech uh, used to, in text-to-speech systems and in these same digital uh, assistants. So just a brief history. In 1791, we get the first acoustic mechanical speech machine built by Wolfgang von Kempelen. And he's the guy who made the, uh, the Turk Automa automaton, the, the fake chess player, actually, because they had someone in there playing chess, and um, it turned out to be a big fraud. But in any case, uh, we got the first. And with a skilled user, this machine could produce full sentences in French, in Italian, and English. Then in 1922, we get Radio Rex. It's the first machine capable of recognizing speech. And it's a toy dog that was uh, controlled by a spring and, a mount and mounted on an electromagnet. And the electromagnet was interrupted if you get an acoustic signal of uh, 500 hertz. So if you said the word Rex, the dog would pop out, e, uh, the E eh in Rex being around 500 hertz. Then we get some um, the Audrey system built by Bell Labs uh, that could recognize only 10 digits. And the IBM shoebox in 1962, which could recognize 16 words and 10 digits and can do mathematical uh, calculations. Uh, but with these systems, you had to use uh, discrete speech, meaning that you had to say each word or digit separately. OK, then in 1962, we've got the IBM 704. And it's the first machine that's able to, that, sings a, that sang a song, and the song being uh, Daisy Bell. And actually, Arthur C. Clarke was present for the uh, speech synthesis demonstration at Bell Labs. And this inspired the scene in uh, 2001, Space Odyssey. So from here, we get a jump in the 1970s from 10 digits to about 1,000 words, uh, which was by a system called Harpy developed at uh, Carnegie Mellon Labs and funded by uh, the DARPA projects. And in the 80s, we see a, uh, towards a, a shift towards speech um, prediction using like hidden Markov models. And this greatly improves our uh, speech recognition systems. So you can see we start to jump in progression, and we start to see uh, more speech synthesizers in the 80s, such as uh, SAM, and you know, which was the first commercial uh, synthesizer. And you could use it in the Commodore 64 and type words, and it would uh, synthesize human speech. In the 90s, we get some more milestones. We're moving uh, away from discrete speech, and we can finally do continuous speech recognition. And this is due to like faster processors and uh, improvements in, tech in hardware. Then we get a lull in about in, until about 2008. Yeah, I know the <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, when we uh, when Google introduces search, okay. And here we got we start having intelligent personal assistants. And an intelligent personal assistant is a software agent that can perform tasks or services for an individual. Uh, tasks are based on user input, location, and access to information online. And usually, they have a consistent personality. It's a term-based uh, conversation. And they're tolerant and polite. So some examples, uh, which everybody might know about, are like Apple Siri, which stands for Speech Interpretation and Recognition Interface. And the invocation would be, hey, Siri. And we've all played around with Siri and know how that sounds. <laughs> I uh, don't how it works. So Google is now is another example. And we have Microsoft Cortana, which was uh, kind of inspired by the AI in the Halo games. And Cortana is actually the most uh, human-like of these systems. Cortana has a team of writers and screenwriters, playwrights, novelists, and uh, essayists, which are trying to provide a more human interactive, a uh, human-like interaction. OK, we've got Amazon Alexa now, which last year was 
one of the highest selling products. And uh, we have uh, skills which are considered like basically applications for your uh, intelligence uh, personal assistance. And any developer can now contribute to the Amazon skills library. So what are some benefits of this system or these tools? Well, this will allow for, to improve the quality of life for people with disabilities, people with speech impediments, people with uh, uh, problems with motor skills. They can use these speech to text or these systems to um, interact with their devices and kind of break down the barriers that, or, and limitations that they might encounter. These systems could also help uh, ESL learners, by speaking with <coughs> the AI, they can probably feel more comfortable instead of uh, being anxious and nervous about speaking with other um, natural speakers. So some of the negatives we have are that the experience is not yet seamless. We have some problems understanding distinct dial dialects or accents, but with the introduction of the neural net deep learning and neural networks, uh, the system can improve and learn, and uh, these problems are being uh, resolved. Okay. So what does this have to do with us as developers? Well, machine learning and neural, neural networks are helping to improve the quality of speech recognition, and the improvements to digital speech processing allows developers to build applications that provide a smoother user experience. And the trend towards speech interfaces for web applications and IoT systems provides a unique opportunity for us as developers. We can consider uh, connecting chatbots and AI systems into something, well, we can consider bots um, as apps, the use of voice as the user interface, and AI pr as a protocol, and the messaging apps as the actual browsers. And ultimately, we want to get to this point. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>